Context. It's Johnny here. And Stephanie. So today we have two special guests. So today we're going to be talking about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Woo! Let's talk about it's Valentine's you, Day. <laughs> yes. So today we have Angelique and John Luna. They are from Sex Positive Me. Hi, guys. Hey there. Hello. So tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourselves. And, uh, you know, you're, you're Orlando residents, correct? Been, been here 30 years. Yep. yep. Tell us a Both little bit about different reasons. Okay. We want to hear about all your reasons. <laughs> all the reasons. Okay. I came down in 91 for UCF. Okay. Down Go in- night. <laughs> yeah. I came down 94 for Disney's college program and ended up working Yay! for the miles CP. for 15 years. Yep. Nice. I'm a CP alumni as well. <laughs> So after getting together, we kind of did the timeline. She used to work at Boardwalk. I used to hang out at Jelly Rolls. How we never met, like I'm going through old Polaroids, like you're in the background somewhere. I know it. We had to have run into each other. But nope, uh, not till uh, 2010. 2010. That's when we met at a swingers meeting great there. Wow, so. that's so cool. I love it's, hearing it's... everybody's different, how they meet, like their love story, how they met and how I blossom into something more. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> and that things don't happen until it's time, you know, exactly. whether your yes. little paths have crossed, but it just wasn't time yet. So, so give us a little bit of information about um, what you guys do. I know you have a, a podcast and you do like a weekly date night broadcast and you also teach classes at Fair Villa, <laughs> which is Orlando's premier adult store, you know, like the best <laughs> one. Man, but when you say that, it sounds like we're overworked, but we love what we do. I know. So. It's just like yeah, the, the coachings and our personal workshops that, that we don't do with Bear Villa and the traveling and the conferences. And yeah, because we like to educate people of all the different, you know, options there is for relationship. And obviously our relationship isn't what you'd call traditional. Oh, never. Not, it didn't even start traditional. I already said it. We met at a swingers meeting greet. <laughs> like our first date, we basically said, hey, I like the swinging community. I'm not leaving it. He's like, I like the swinging too. I'm not leaving. I'm like, okay, great. We, we both agree. We're not leaving the community. So that's it. And then also he admitted that he was bi and, you know, for a man to no, say no, no, it. No. Yeah, that what, was like the What I day. did was I was down <laughs> in Winter Park with you. Oh, We're God. walking around uh, Park Avenue. And this is like two weeks into dating. And I had, again, I had been divorced two years. I knew what I wanted. And by the way, I never wanted a relationship. Never say never. <laughs> and I told her, uh, I'm never going to be monogamous and I'm never going to be straight. If you can deal with that, I'd really like to go ahead and see a lot more of you. And I got thrown up against the wall in that furniture store. That was four post bed. I threw you up against the post. <laughs> and kissed me. <laughs> and that's going on almost 12 years now. And mm-hmm. we've been together inseparable ever since. Yeah. So I think we have a lot of, I mean, questions about this. We, Jonathan and I have been single for a while. And um, we're very open people. But yes. um Tell us a little bit about what it's like to have, like, I guess what you would say a primary partner and then how you like set boundaries and kind of feel comfortable with each other to like explore these other relationships. Okay. So to sit, first off, we started swinging and we have evolved over the years. So we're open relationship, BDSM. We both just started polyamory and we have fetishes, right? That covers, that, that, covers, that, covers it all. that covers everything. Number one rule, what we always tell everyone is your communications. You really have to be open and communicate. And even if you have challenges, grab a journal, write it out, take a time out to process your thoughts and feelings before talking to your significant other or your partner in regards to what is it that you're experiencing. Because if you do it at the moment, Sometimes it could be like a friggin' bomb exploding, even though you don't mean to. And it's just learning better communication skills. It's like, that's one thing that people like look at us. It's like, oh, well, you have great sex. It's like, no, you don't understand. We've gone through a lot of communication skills to have great sex. (laughs) Yeah, that's definitely true. One of the things I will always say is we don't recruit, we educate. And the reason is, regardless of the, everyone has a relationship that's right for them. And if monogamy works out for you, hey, fantastic. stick with it. Don't, don't, don't go out of your comfort zone just because it looks like the cool thing to do. However, some of us aren't built for that. And when we're put yeah. in the box, we're just unhappy. Things just don't work out. 
we were lucky to find each other and literally have almost the same needs in relationships as far as having the freedom to, to, to go out and have other partners. Uh, but we talk more than I've ever talked with any other human being on earth. And it takes a while to get that open and comfortable sharing everything with someone. And then especially establishing boundaries. I mean, our boundaries have changed and evolved over the years. And it is trying to be patient with especially yourself and then with your partner, because you're still trying to figure out, is this an acceptable boundary? It, what, what's triggering it? What's wrong? You know, And then you try to compare yourself to another couple or another person. It's like, no, 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 no. When it comes to these alternative relationships, you do what's best between you and your partner or partners and that it's consensually agreed on and negotiated. You know, some people, it might be okay to do medical play, but I'm like, outsource, you, you, you could go play medical play with somebody else. I don't do that. Shit, you <laughs> yeah. Know? And it's so cool that you guys are very open about that because me as a gay man, I always felt that the straight world was completely different and they made it seem that it was so taboo to be very free, like how the gay community is, where they're very open, they're very promiscuous. And, you know, we're always judged by the outside world that's not, you know, part of that. So it's kind of nice that you guys are able to educate, you know, everybody, gay, straight, whatever, that, you know, love, relationship, it doesn't matter, doesn't have any boundaries, except the ones that you create for yourself or your partner or partners, like you said. So. That's one thing for me, I kind of felt like in the gay world has been very taboo with that. Like I haven't had, I've only had one serious relationship my whole life. I've dated here and there. Um, I've had previous people that I would date tell me, hey, you know, are you open to like open relationships or, you know, doing, you know, all these other crazy things. And at first I wasn't because I haven't had that full, full experience yet of that monogamy relationship. I'm not saying that I'm not open to the idea but like for me, for an example, like I would say I would need, like you said, that trust, that communication is very much key with everything and kind of have uh, at least some time just, you know, him and I together before opening up that other realm of including all the fun, adventurous things that you guys do. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's and something that, is, um, that when we found out about you guys, I was like, oh, wow, that's so cool because, uh, for some reason, a lot of the straight people, they keep it very hush-hush, very taboo. So it's good that you guys are able to tell people and educate people about it and not have it so so taboo at the end of the day. <laughs> taboo I feel like is the key word. Yes. I feel like people have been talking about like, I think lately you hear a lot about like straight people and the pineapples and like how, you know, <laughs> it's yes, like this, like you're almost like taboo like I don't know it's just I feel like it's yeah. been into the mainstream world within like the past year or two like about swingers and like people wearing pineapple stuff on cruises and stuff like that so <laughs> is that what it's like or I feel it's, like it's a whole different world you know it, it is a different world it's trending as I do the air yeah yeah because... that's what I would say yeah, it, it's one of those things that we've gotten and I get personally upset about it because there's so much that goes involved into the relationship that it's not like, hey, let's get together and just have sex and you know, and that's all it is. And I'm like, no, 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 you have to understand what are the boundaries, what are the yeah. communications, yeah. what are the rules, you know, what are the expectations? It's not just like, hey, we get together and then you know that it, it magically happens. And I'm like, that is just what number one disaster that we always see. The one thing you hear everyone who's been in the community a little while, you always hear them saying, we're trying to avoid drama because it always seems to happen. There's always a couple who came here and didn't talk or something. And she thinks she's going to play and he's going to sit and watch. And he thinks she's going to help him hook up with every guy there. And then they get there and they have this big blowout. And it's kind of like, you know, at any club, you can just kind of sit in there like, I don't need to deal with this. This is my fun night. Go away. I don't yeah. want to hear it. Yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things that even some people, they have rules and they're like, what do you mean you have rules? Well, because I want to know that I have a good time because when I'm off the clock and not coaching people, I want to enjoy my time. Yeah, so for sure. Hear my rules. They're like, but why do you have it? You should be here. At your I'm like, you pay me to educate when I'm playing. I want to have fun and not educate because we've had some dates that ended up like turning therapy into session. therapy sessions. I'm like, Really? It's like you were a hot looking couple. We had some just. Ah. Oh. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> so there's a place um, that I have some questions about. Have you guys ever been to the Secrets Hideaway Resort? We actually knew them when before they became Secrets, when it used to be house parties. So we've known so, them for quite some time. I mean, I see people like post about it online and I kind of like want to go, but I'm like, I, I don't know what the etiquette is. You know, is this a place where you can like anyone is welcome or you have to be like part of this community or you have to be invited? Anyone's welcome, but... Again, do your research. It doesn't hurt to send them a Facebook or some message asking some stuff. A yeah. um, couple of things I'll tell you right off the bat. You're not required to play. No. If okay. yeah. you want to go sit at the bar and just watch people having it added it at the pool, go for it. If they didn't want to be watched, they wouldn't be doing it by the pool. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> people will hit on you, and it's, it's just a polite thing. And that, that's the one thing about the swinger community with sex being so out in the open. You know, hey, you know, I think you're very attractive. If you want later on, let's go back to my room. That's not an uncommon pickup. Like in the straight world, that would be like, oh my God, this guy just asked me to have sex. Yeah. yeah. In a swing club, it's like, well, yeah, that's yeah. what we're here for. Yeah. Do you guys want to go play? It's like, oh yeah. You know, we just came back from a swinger party this weekend. Well, it was just technically two. two. Yeah, two, but technically a kind of deal. But it is, you know, one of the things with secrets, it does have a variety of different people and and also in any swinger events that we've gone to in clubs, you are going to run into your high school cliques, you know, here's the jocks, here's the yeah. cheerleaders, here's, you know, it's going to be like that at any big event or like a club. So just keep that in mind because there, there are times it is like being in high school all over. I'm like, what are you gossiping here? Why did you cheese me there? What's it? You know, it's like, I'll go with one caveat. Oh God. I've gone to swing clubs and nudist resorts all over the country. Most of them doesn't matter your, your body shape or size or your age. I was at a party where there was like 21 year olds and 72 year olds. Oh, wow. I mean, they were together, but it's just, That's everyone just comes to the party. Mm-hmm. It See, seems like fun. Yeah. yeah. I like that because I always felt that, you know, you probably needed to have like a certain look or, you know, certain, you know, like, you know, with that, with, when it came to those things. So with, by you saying that I've been to, you know, some bathhouses or whatever, but it was just, I don't know, it wasn't the type. I haven't had a chance to really fully experience like a, a, a swingers club or the resort and stuff. But by you saying that they're pretty open-minded, it doesn't matter about age and body types. That kind of gives people who might feel a little bit more shy or uncomfortable the opportunity to be able to go there and just to kind of check it out and not necessarily always get involved with just doing sex, you know, just kind of taking baby steps to getting the sub more comfortable with the whole with the whole type of atmosphere overall. So I like that. We've gone several times to swing clubs and talked with people and just had a ball and left like it was a regular club. And we were just, yeah. maybe tonight, there wasn't the spark, the chemistry, the whatever. And then there's sometimes we have dates and we last an hour at the club and go straight back to the room. Right. Depends. All depends. And then also sometimes they actually end up like being our regular friends. So it's like, hey, we're going to a barbecue. We're going to someone's birthday party. But then, you know, once in a while we'll get together and have sex. So, you know, that's the kind that's of friendship that simple. develops. <laughs> yes. It's just that simple. <laughs> yes. People just make it so complicated. So when people attend our swinger etiquette event, our etiquette class, they're just like, what? It's not as complicated. I'm like, no, it's not as complicated as you think. You want to make it complicated because the media makes it complicated. That's so true. another um, another Orlando um, place is called the Woodshed. Have you guys been to the Woodshed? They're one of our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that? The Woodshed is, and, and I'm I'm not trying to inflate them too much, but they are <laughs> one of the best dungeons. In, in the, the country. country no no we're not inflating oh, wow. because every time we've gone to a convention like a, a fetish convention or bdsm convention they hear that we're from orlando and they like you spoil little bitches you have the woodshed you are so wow. i'm like i we never thought until we traveled outside because it's such a great community they'll teach you they'll walk you around all the different um bdsm equipment you could sit and watch or participate or have someone you know walk you through things they've have classes that's where we learned how to rope and get into suspension um very friendly they always try to get back to the community the only thing with the woodshed there is no on sex on premise so like on at secrets yes you can have sex wherever the woodshed is no it's um it is a pansexual what um it's a safe space. For I know, everyone. but it's like, I can't remember the full disclosure on the, what the, the, I know it's a pansexual club. 
Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I will say, though, is regardless of which clubs you're going to, the one rule which is going to be in this lifestyle is assume that everyone you talk to outside of that club or you see outside of the club is closeted until told otherwise. Yes. Yes. Don't do something like, hey, in the middle of uh, church, in the middle of the end of church, you look over and go, oh, my God, weren't you at that swinger club party last (laughs) night? Which actually oh, has happened. Has happened. We always have to put that disclosure on everybody because we have to remind them some people's employment agreements has a morality clause. So even though if they're doing BDSM privately in their own home, they could get fired. So that's why we always remind people do not out anybody unless you're in a area that is safe and everyone knows. And the wow. last thing I want to add about the woodshed though just like secrets, you're not required to play. If you want to go and watch and check it out, that's fantastic. If you're just a voyeur who wants to go on a regular basis and never plays, you're still welcome. So do they have like um, nights, events, like uh, membership stuff? Well, both clubs do require membership due to the nature of the of the event and then yeah. um woodshed you could check their calendars i know second friday is photography night first friday is rope night um last friday of the month is their bdsm 101 so to really introduce the community what's all about and what's our safe things so it's really good and then they have um various different ones but those are like the three that i know off the top of my head that's always consistent every month well, now once a month they do have a pup night which is a lot okay of that's a new one the pup night's new Ooh, what is what that? That? <laughs> that is when I get indulge up. us. I indulge. Uh, it's one of my newer fetishes. It's basically, uh, and you, if again, you've been to bathhouses and stuff, you've probably uh, seen this, Jonathan. But um, I get dressed up in harness, leash, collar, puppy mask, paws, the whole bit, and I meet up with other puppies and we have a ball. Oh, okay. I like that. So, and and the, and, the, and um. Is it do, do they have like different um because with the I seen like the different mask and puppy do they have like different types of you know I guess you can kind of say the costumes or the different masks that oh, they yeah. put on and like different animals or creatures and things like that too or well the, the they're critters all, they're called critters. yeah critters there you go that's, that's the word <laughs> term. and yes. yes I know a cat I know a fox I know a wolf. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's all welcome. And you can there's so much you can do with the costume and have fun with it. But it is getting out of your, what I'll say is for me, it's getting out of my mindset. I yeah. do a lot of stuff, obviously, a lot of responsibility. You put the leash in the, in the, in the, in that, uh, that hood on me, I don't give a shit about nothing. I'm playing a puppy. Yeah. All of that awesome. just goes away. Yeah. Yes, yeah I like that. The pup mask um, have different colors and each uh-huh. color represents whatever they're looking for. So oh, certain okay. colors mean certain things. Like red means what? Anal play? Red, red means fisting, if oh, you're going by that. Sorry. Obviously, yellow is water sports. I forget what blue is. <laughs> but there's a whole I like how there's different a different whole whole color. Yeah, it's called flagging, <laughs> yes. No, no, that's pretty cool because that way you kind of know what you're looking for and then tell other people what, what you're looking at, you know, the same thing. So that, that definitely kind of makes sense. I was on your on your website and I was looking that you have different types of classes. Could you kind of uh, let us know a little bit more about like the different types of classes that you teach, especially out there at uh, Fair Villa? Okay, well, at Fair Villa, um, geez, well, usually at least twice a year, we're doing a BDSM 101 class. Okay. We actually just did a rope and romance class where we did sensual bondage. Ooh. Go ahead and take Give a little bit more information about <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is about rope, it's one of those things that takes practice. It helps if you're a Boy Scout. Oh, whatever. However, <laughs> you get very close with another person. You're holding them. They're trusting you. There's a lot going on that's unsaid. And it, it does get extremely intimate between mm-hmm. us. But we also do what? Impact classes? Oh, we do... Uh, right. Our signature class is relationship flavors, where we actually go and break down the entire different types of relationships, the swinging, the polyamory, the BDSM, and the fetishes. But the first half of the class can go for anybody, monogamous or non-monogamy. So we mm-hmm. talk about communication, consent, jealousy, um, all the challenges that you may have in boundaries. Uh, what's the other one that uh, swinger etiquette now we just created lifestyle etiquettes that crosses over to both bdsm and swinging 
um, I'm trying to think what else we had. Oh, uh, the one we always kind of keep that hurricane. <laughs> the oh, hunker our, down. Hunker down. It's our hurricane preparedness class. And so we teach you based on the list that they tell you to prepare for hurricane, what you can do for your sex life too. So <laughs> well, it's a, you know, it's you a might, fine tongue in cheek class, but it gets you, you. You might lose power. And when are you going to have like, you know, maybe a day or two at home without a phone ringing or a computer off? And if you got that kind of opportunity, don't be caught without your toys. Because that's, that's the right. perfect time where no one's going to call. <laughs> Make sure everything I mean, is fully charged. <laughs> what else are you going to do? You're going to be alone. You gotta, I mean, you're with your partner. Might as well go have some fun, you know? <laughs> right. Of which you would not believe how um, online toy sales went up during COVID. That shouldn't be I'm sure. a mystery. <laughs> I'm There's one, in, one industry <laughs> that made money. There. So yeah. do you guys do any classes of your on your own? And I also see you, you do tarot readings and everything. Tarot, tarot readings, yeah. Yeah. Because I'm an intuitive psychic medium. Yes, I do that. Because that's how I was like, I'm an uncensored love coach because I combine both worlds because I'm a certified kink aware professional, contra, conscious erotic touch certified. Um, so yeah, we, we want to make sure that everyone gets their sexual wellness in, however it may be, if I have to tap into the other side or based on knowledge that I have. So yeah, we do, like I was saying, our classes that we do separate from Fair Villa, and um, we do them right now online because we really haven't found the space. So hopefully, maybe soon we could find a place that we could actually host the classes because we're one of those, like, we love the interaction in person. Like, I'm like, here, feel this, yeah. touch this you know, understand what you're getting yourself into. You know what you forgot to mention? One of our best classes. What? We do a male pleasure class. Oh, yes, that one. And <laughs> Which well, it's popular with, I, I, somehow in COVID, it became popular for bachelorettes and birthday parties. People were asking you know why? <laughs> okay, go for it. Because I deep throw a dildo in the middle of class as I'm oh. teaching the better ways to, you know, how to do it without choking or end up coughing and having the, you know, the, 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 the tearing eyes when you're done. Yes. <laughs> you know, penis pleasure from a penis owner. That's why people want it. You know, I mean, nobody, yeah. nobody could teach it better. Yeah. But then we went on, we actually had interviewed some uh, doctors and nurses to get really the specifics on how an erection works. Why does Viagra work and what else is available? So again, there's people out there that are getting into swinging in their thirties and forties and fifties. And sometimes you may need a little bit of help and there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. So we want to make sure we have the facts for that. So what are some outlets that you could use if you are interested in starting these kinds of relationships? Like where would you go to look? Are there like dating apps or, you know, like you guys said you met at a, a meetup, what kind of things in Orlando or even, I mean, I guess nationwide people could look for. Um, SDC.com. They're, they're also one of our sponsors, <laughs> but we actually have fun a lot with SDC because they have like articles, information, videos. We live stream every Monday night at seven o'clock date night with the Luna. So people could join in, ask us questions, hear about our adventures, ask us how we feel, what we're doing. So, I mean, we have so many people involved in us that it's kind of comical to a certain extent. But I was going to say, uh, if, you, if you are interested in whether it's BDSM or, again, alternative relationships, check out our website and check out our YouTube channel. And they are, you know, go to the website, sexpositiveme.com. It goes over there because we have videos talking about all different types of topics. One, one of the biggest one that comes up is as we're in an open relationship, what, how do we deal with jealousy? And the biggest yeah. thing I want to say with that is don't deny it. Mm -mm. If you're feeling jealous, I mean, don't start screaming like a kid in the middle of a, of a club, but deal with it don't don't we've seen that too <laughs> shame is not i'm uh, sorry jealousy is not something to be shamed over um because we're taught to be shamed over certain emotions if you feel too yeah. angry and you get an outburst oh that's bad if, if you're jealous oh that's bad they're not bad they're feelings acknowledge them learn to deal with them talk with your partner about them and and see if you can you know prevent that from happening again and, or at least explain it. And really try to process out what is it that you're jealous about? Is it they're spending too much time? Did they do something that you wanted to do? Uh, are you hurt? Uh, what is that feeling? So it, we really try to dig down a lot in getting people to understand jealousy is not just the catch-all phrase. There's more to it than what you think. That's definitely uh -huh. true. I think that's a, that's been a, a, an issue with a lot of a lot of couples, especially when they want to 
start exploring things and and not being able to communicate exactly what they feel. So that's that's definitely important. I also saw that you guys uh, do a lot of LGBT uh, of issue things. What is, what are some of the uh, topics or things that you get asked about within the LGBT community when um, when you do some of these classes? Well, focusing more on the bisexuality because as you were hearing, like you were saying, all the like the judgments and the shames, yeah. we get it all the time. He gets it more by saying, pick a side and divorce her. And I'm like, yeah. <gasps> oh my yeah, God. <laughs> it is one of those that a bisexual woman is like any, any club, any night, anywhere in the country. <laughs> but two guys kissed a certain bar. That's all. That could cause a serious problem. And as you know, as you know yeah. b- being bi, I mean, when we came, I came out uh, open and publicly in 2013, mm-hmm. we had partners that we played with who now that I came out, we're like, no, we don't want to play. I'm like, dude, we were we, four we, of us. We were all naked. We were all having fun. You get kind of tag team me, you know? It's like, mm. And now all of a sudden, because in my mind, I'm bi and I'm like, okay with it, they're not. Yeah, so. it's, 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 it sucks that, that people think like that because especially a lot of, there's a lot of like, and especially like a nigga a lot of DLs. And when you, when you like, at least for example, like on Grindr, which is one of the hookup sites, like there's a lot of these DL guys that don't want to show pictures or they want to, they want to just meet up and keep everything hushed up. But it's like, we're all here looking for the same thing to spend some time, have some fun. So it's like, I don't know why do you want to make things a, but a much bigger deal than what it really is. You know, we're not here to out you out. We're just here to have some fun and you go your own separate way and that's that. So I wish it was that simple, but we've gotten so much pushback and discrimination about it. I mean, we talked about it on uh, Pakasha Shah. We did a presentation about the silent B and how much, you know, we're all supposed to be together at, in the community, LGBTQ, but when it comes to the, to B, it's silent. We don't talk about it. They don't exist. You know, that yeah. I'm like, why? I will say the last five years, it's gotten better. Yes, it has. It definitely has. For a while, I actually ran a support group down at the LGBTQ Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ran a group for bisexual men. And just to show you how closeted they are, I had over 700 members in my meetup group. Wow. However, when I had- And that's just from group, Orlando area? Yes, the Orlando area. Yep. When I yep. had a monthly meeting, there were times three would show up. Wow. It's just people, they want to know about it. They want to talk about it online. But to actually get out there, it's a risk for some people. Especially one of the things that we covered a lot of is guys coming out in their 30s and 40s who were married for 10 or 20 years. Yeah. And it's not that yeah. I want to go fuck. It's I just want to talk about it with my wife and say that, you know, I am by. I am attracted okay. to both. Okay. So... I think, I think, um, men are just, they feel shameful. You know, I've talked to to men about it and, and it seems like they just don't want to, you know, when you talk to, sometimes you talk to men about like anal play or things and they're like, don't touch my butt, don't touch it. And it's like, why? Here's my toy. (laughs) Do you realize how much pleasure you're missing out on? Like what you have no idea. And it just, it, what does it matter what anyone calls you or thinks about you or, you know, it's your life, it's your sexual ha- happiness, you know? Right, but that's also the same guy who says, hey, but I want to have butt sex with you. Like yeah. Supposed to have butt sex yeah. And not reciprocate. Exactly. exactly. All right, guys. Well, we wanted to maybe wrap it up. We want to do like an Orlando speed round. So we wanted to ask you some questions about Orlando and maybe we could just talk about some of your favorites since you guys have been here for a while. So um, starting with, uh, what is your favorite restaurant in Orlando? Taco Chino. I love Taco Chino, yes. Oh, yeah. Don't, have I you been? Your, um, chicken, uh, chicken tikka masala burrito from there. Oh, see, uh, I always go for the Korean beef tacos. And whenever they have the pork belly tacos, those are like- I've been tried that one. Where is it at? It's off of Mills, um, off, okay. yeah, off of Mills Road, like by close to the center. It's next to the center. Yes, like okay. the same parking lot. Next to the center, yeah, yeah. Taco Chino is pretty good food. How about what is one of your uh, favorite Orlando activities to do around town? Ooh, truth is, I like going around Lake Eola. 
I just sometimes go down there, take my camera, walk around the park, maybe do some pictures or maybe just it, it's a great place to just sit and watch the swans go by. Yeah, the swans are so cute down there. I've been seeing a lot of people post pictures of uh, the swans and them nesting and in the water. I know, I've been talking about like too. open relationships and I picked the, well, watching the swans. What was your <laughs> swan, you know me, I'm Disney. That's why I have my annual pass. It's like, God forbid, <laughs> take away my annual well, pass. Well, I mean, it's a good place because there's so many people that go out there for, you know, whether they're walking, they're exercising. So it's a good place to like people watch too. You know, you can oh, always yeah. go to the little restaurant there, have a nice cocktail, you know, a beer and people watching. Who knows? You can even, you know, meet some people along the way as well. So I know I have in the past. <laughs> mm -hmm. I used to have a, I used to have uh, someone who I knew, an acquaintance, we'll call this person, and she used to tell me that she would go down there to like Lake Eola, and her husband would be there, and he would pretend like he didn't know her, and they would like role play, like they would run into each other, and then they would be like, like they're just meeting for the first time, and I always thought that was, some, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. That's what we consider date night. We always encourage people every week, one day a week, make sure you have a date night there. I mean, even though we have the show, but we also do our own little date night to just keep the spice alive. Yeah. Um, we went down there for Christmas. They had like a, a nice little light display, like around, they had these big like teddy bears and Christmas boxes and like uh, a big, what was it? Like an orange or something that the week, lots of like cool places to take pictures. Yeah, and the farmer's market is fun there, too, on the weekends. I like going there during the farmer's market, seeing all the different, like, local vendors selling, like, all the different, like, foods and, like, different drinks and, obviously, fruits and vegetables as well. So it's it's pretty cool. There's a lot of things to see and do out there in Lake Eola, So We're addicted to food trucks. Yes. What's your favorite, what's your favorite food truck? El Cubanito. Oh, I never heard of that one. I haven't, I haven't tried it's a that cu one. It's a Cuban food truck. Yeah, I haven't tried that one yet. We have to de I'll definitely check that one out. Do they do it out there in Lake Eola or? Oh, we, it, well, we haven't. We're in our community. They have, they come here all the time. And so then I just kind of follow them on Facebook when they're somewhere else. So like when, you know, FEMA was doing the COVID shots, we were over there eating there <laughs> or like the various. I love, hey, it's as authentic Cuban food. It's really good from a food truck. I can't go wrong. Okay. We got to add that to the list, Steph. That way we can try it out. You know, we got a couple. Know. We got a couple trucks on our list. It's it's just hard because you got to follow them around. You know, you got to follow their Instagram posts and be like, okay, where are they at tonight? Is it close to me? Can I make it? We got to go. Exactly. <laughs> so the final question would be, what is your our Orlando pro tip? Like, if you were new to Orlando and you were teaching somebody how to navigate the city or like a secret that you have about living here? Cause it can be a busy place, but uh, there are lots of cool things here. That's just it. There's too many cool things. <laughs> it depends on what side of town you are, but you're on the UCF side or you're in the Disney side. And that's what happened with us. When we first met, he lived over by UCF. I lived here by Disney. So all depends on what you're looking for the atmosphere i mean even now with lake nona that that's like a great area like it's up and, up and coming yes and it it's is. still like small town they do a lot here in horizon west too there's a lot of cool stuff recently we did the van gogh exhibit oh how van was it here. it just seems like in orlando oh it was beautiful it was it was a good 40 minutes just sit down and be amazed where's where's that at currently yeah. It, it left. It left. It was, oh, it was an then. eye drive. For a limited time. The, and then the any of center, the right? um, immersive creatives, their stuff that just following all them, it, you know, the local artists, that's the thing. As much as Orlando is still a small city, we still have great art and music around. It's just a matter of like, you know, Finding tuning it. in and connecting with the right people to get to the, all those awesome experiences. You could live here a decade and not do everything from the, like I said, the dinner shows to of course the theme parks to the concerts that go on. Um, about five years ago, we were thinking of moving away and kind of did that list of what are we losing? And yeah. obviously we didn't leave because we <laughs> like this city way too much. I mean- now, People just assume that it's just only theme parks, only Disney, only Universal. And it's like, there's so much more to see. Other people complain how there's no sense of local community, which there really is. But like, you gotta just really kind of put yourself out there and and find it, you know, but it's there. even us. We're always discovering new things. Like 
you know, through our podcast and through doing our social media, always finding new stuff and like meeting new people like you who just keep the ball rolling of new things for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, people just don't realize how many hitting gems are here in Orlando compared to like the rest of the world. It's like, because the marketing is so big on theme parks, but there's yeah. so much community and support and outreach here, more than people think. So before we leave, is there anything you want to plug, anything upcoming that you're doing or anything that you want to talk about? Well, I'd say if anyone has any questions, they can hit us up at info at sexpositiveme.com. Mm-hmm. And again, it, it can be as simple as, you know, why are we in the relationships but we've gotten so we've gotten some really like there's a question after four paragraphs describing how they got to that point but uh, <laughs> check out the website again we're, we try to be here as a resource we, we, we love helping the community again we're not recruiters but if you're going to do it we say do it right and we try to educate right so our website's going to go under a major rehaul within the next couple months so have patience with us but you can find us anywhere and everywhere on um sex positive me instagram is the only one we have to do spm the lunas because they're mean <laughs> they don't like sex they don't like sex <laughs> But yeah, um, our upcoming classes are not our next class is not until March 24th at Fair Villa for Tantra 101. But we do offer private classes, workshops, coaching, whatever you need guidance and help with. We're here to help you out and make sure you have the best sex. Oh, yes. We're here. We for all that. need that. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, make sure you listen in. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. Check out the Lunas. Check out their website, everything. Follow us on TikTok and Instagram. And thanks for talking to us today. Yes, thanks, guys. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. Bye.